we have a right type of culture because they uh, actually they they try uh, they struggle to have a uh, number one to have a brand image number two have a differentiations from other competitors or uh, to really serve the customer uh, better than others uh, but the really at the bottom uh, core uh, is your the culture of your organization. You know, more than three people gathered together uh, is already your form of culture. That's why we call it, there's a spirit of army and there's a spirit of, uh, you know, Marines and the spirit of Navy, who, who keep saying beat army, but I don't know whether they, they could ever do that. Anyway, uh, we are so thankful to have a Philip Chan. Uh, we are not going to uh, go over his history uh, because we have done this before and probably you could uh, you know already um, just a few uh, words that he has founded the yoga land i mean sorry uh, he has founded uh, uh Loka first uh, then he founded the yoga land about seven years ago and uh, has been one of the most successful uh, uh, food chain uh, uh, company in the state and uh, now let's welcome uh, Philip Chan. Good evening. Thank you for coming uh, to hear my story and I'll do my best to share what I've learned uh, in seven years uh, through this company. That, uh, uh, as I explained before, uh, uh, making the company successful one of the core item is uh, building the culture. Actually, it's all about culture. It's all about people, and that, that's why they do it. If you hit the, that right spot, then you can make it really successful. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people think uh, making the, their business successful is all about how can I uh, you know, uh, boost the sales right now? How can I do marketing better? I do uh, uh, lower the cost of goods and all those kind of things. But uh, there's a limit. You can do so much and, uh, and you, you will burn out. You, you cannot do everything. So when you run this mom and pop store and you put about maybe 15, 16 hours a day and still struggling, and you gotta know what, what's going on. You put so much time and so much effort and you put all your heart and, and still uh, not as good as so many, uh, many other competitors. So you gotta see, you gotta analyze what it is. And you, you wanna the, um, make it efficient and you, you gotta do smart way. So I wanna share uh, the wisdom I got uh, from Bible that how I practice that in, in, in real time. Hopefully this is something you can take uh, uh, today. So let's see. Uh, I'll start. Uh, I'll show you big picture first. Um, any organization, uh, people get together. So you, usually, let let I'll explain through my my case that uh, I started. Uh, I think now it's uh, eight years ago. So with one store. And actually this company, we start with three people, so me and two others. So you can imagine, it is not about you bought a company and then you grew from there. It is not that you're, you're starting the uh, same as other mom and pop. So you are wearing so many hats, you are going to do uh, everything. So baseball is one man show, right? So everybody go through that, maybe some about to start and that. So uh, my story, maybe you, you can pick up a lot from there. So, when, when, when you start at the beginning, it is all about you managing everything. So you plan, and you execute it, and you just give simple order to few other people what to do, and you try to supervise it every single item. So baseball and micromanage. And you can do that micromanage only up to certain much, right? Because you have only limited time to go over, look over people. So uh, one of the big
biggest mistake uh, people make um, uh, running their businesses, they forget to look at the big picture and uh, try to see uh, as detailed as possible and uh, give them order so to make it right. But when you have only about you know 60 hours a week or maximum let's say 70 80 hours a week and uh, you can supervise only few people that's it so when, when you have more than those limited you know, number of people you can supervise after that you uh, you is placed out of control so when you have more than 10 people you supervise actually after that you cannot tell what to do uh, to everyone so right that time that culture is start to uh, making all those systems work. So, so think about it. we have a uh, lots of mom and pop stores in uh, K Town there, and, and most of the uh, small business owners struggling with that same thing. So they have one store, maybe five employee or ten employee, maybe at most twenty employee, and uh, that's all they can do. They they. Uh, when they open the second store, and they have this you know, big trouble because they have a limited time to go back and forth to this two store or three store, and because of limitation, and problems start to happen from that time. So when you build the right culture, actually that is the one that breaks your limitation of it. And the, the better you do, actually you can build exactly the same way of uh, doing it, uh, running you know, one store to hundred store to actually thousands of stores, basically same concept. So you repeat, you copy, you use it the same way. So uh, I call it, uh, when you have uh, people under you, there's one layer, so you're going to give an order. And then after that, it, it grows. And then each, it, w you need to build one supervisor because there's too many people you cannot uh, manage. So. You're, you're putting one supervisor, which is you're inserting one level. So there is a kind of challenge comes up. And then after that, it, when it grows bigger, actually you need another person to supervise that. So the second layer is coming up. So basically how to manage this additional layer comes in, it is uh, basically the same concept, how, how you manage all those people. So uh, this, uh, I wanna share how you build that. So I'll, I'll go straight to the exact, uh, you know, how I build it and how, how I practice it, I'll share that. Actually, uh, right now, eight years of running my business, actually first four years, I, I struggled. Same as many other uh, people here. Uh, and uh, at the beginning, I was able to make it, uh, the, the, my business running pretty well. Actually, it, it's, uh, it's about all about idea. My, uh, uh, the, the concept of, the, of this business made it uh, pretty running out by itself. But when you reach certain point, actually I found myself, well, I see the stores performing great, but I see my organization is failing. So I was, you know, I, I saw, I think within one year or a late, uh, maybe ladies, three years, I am going to collapse. I, I felt that. So that, that, uh, there was about four or five years of that. So basically, uh, I, I went through that very difficult time. How can I overcome this? The problem is when I had uh, so many people to manage, actually, because I didn't build a culture, how they do was, well, I cannot manage the person. The person expect, you know, the, the person will not be supervised. So they will do whatever they want and just get the job done. And then after that, just leave it. So people just uh, will cheat their time, uh, sometimes cheat money. And uh, I mean, the company was some, somewhat mess. So I, I see the challenge and I try to build how can I do it? So I start to look at uh, materials here, there, uh, uh, learn from uh, people, and then read through, uh, you know, proverbs and, and try to get at everything and how, how do I deal with it. And, and this is how, how I came up. And then after about three, I mean two, two to three years, I was able to clean it up. Every
everything actually turn it around 180 degrees. So before, if anybody, so uh, maybe about four years or five years ago, people see our organization, how they work, maybe it must be very, very uh, disappointed. You know, how, how this company is so uh, running poorly, but story is doing well. But you know, if, if I keep that way, I must uh, lose hope in us already by this time. So I'm going to share. There are three components I, I found. Uh, how can I uh, change, turn around uh, this company? So usually, turning around is way harder than start from scratch. So with any business, same thing. When you build new business, actually that's easier than uh, you purchase a certain failing business and turn around. Because there, there's speed moving forward, and then you, if you to turn around, you need extra force to, to turn around, but it is very difficult. So uh, maybe I want to share that. Um, I see it is, uh, I made a three part I have to do. So what's our mission? And uh, ours, I want to read it uh, to you. So to bring people together for the most flavorful, innovative and fun frozen yogurt experience that makes bad day good and a good day great. So uh, any of you want to make sure, what do you want to do? Our company, what's the purpose of our company? So you better build some kind of thing, that mission statement. Everybody has to memorize this and that's who we are, that's the spirit. So that's the very top. And right under, Okay, when, when, you, when you have this mission statement, make sure you are not looking at very short. So let's say everybody want to make a profit, right? It's obvious. Want to make a, uh, so uh, you don't want to put in a way, okay, I want to sell, okay, we, we sell great product and make a great profit. You know, people do not buy that. You have to think something People see that it's, a, it's something uh, higher value that anybody here, oh, I want to be part of it. You have to, so it, it, it's something for others. It's not just your own profit. You don't care others. So it, this has to have the feeling <coughs> of it is really for other people you want to do. So, so the, make a mission statement. And then right after that, you have to put, make a value. What's your value? So we have a five value. I put that in our business card, back of our business card. So everybody's in, in our organization, everybody's business card in the back, we have this five uh, value. First one is THTK, totally honest, totally kind. And the second is humble and passionate, innovative, teamwork. So you pick something, how do you do it? Right? And so the so first one, uh, totally honest, totally kind, and second one, humble. These two are the maybe most important for me. So that what I think most important, you put it there, you have to share it. So people know when, you know, our first value of totally honest, totally kind, they have to act that way. I mean, I will share how, how, how we make uh, that happen. So, you know, make some value, and that's how we want to do. And then after that, the strategy. So this mission statement, value, and strategy. These three are building identity, who we are, what we want to do. We have to make it very clear, people uh, focus on this. So when you have just one store or two store, it seems like, it seems like it is too abstract. It's something, uh, can we get money out of it? It doesn't look like, uh, it's, it's, it is not a really money maker right there. But uh, I'm talking about this is long term. You are preparing the company to uh, go bigger and greater. So you, ha you have to have it. So our third one, strategy uh, for ours is uh, number one, best quality yogurt. Number two, best flavor slash production. 
and product innovation, and the third one, best value for customer. So basically, our uh, business is, is a food business. So I believe in product quality. That's number one. You know, people can forgive price, but they will not forgive food taste. Right? Even they uh, pay dirt cheap, they will complain the bad taste. So I know that. So that's our uh, strategy. How uh, we are going to uh, do it. So so those three makes an idea. And then. You need to have the right people. So let's say four, about four years ago, and I, I, I tried to analyze who do I have, who, who can I uh, keep, who should I let go. And uh, it, it is really, really difficult uh, you know, struggle that uh, fighting within me. <coughs> How can I terminate people? You know, they have their family, and uh, they need to survive. What do I do? So there is a like an ethic problem I, I went through, and it's very difficult. But I looked at it this way. Let's say, uh, like in our society, let's any 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 country. There is one or two criminals out of 100 people. Okay, now, how do you manage the country? So out of 100 people, there are one or two criminals. You know, if you make the, uh, a taller wall, and very tight system, and bigger prison, and uh, harsh punishment, uh, and, and make the traffic law super tight, so if you go over one mile, over limited speed, you're in trouble. You go to jail. Do you think that, that that kind of method can make the best country? Actually, the better way is if you separate those one or two, separate that, and then rest of 98 or 98, 98 or 99 people give the highest trust and give freedom, actually that will turn the country a lot better. And actually that's the method I chose. And so I have to decide for those to let go, I have to write it. Who, who will stay, who will go. So I made a long, long list and how do I execute it. So I made a, it, it's a, it's kind of you're making blacklist, okay, and then and, and removing one by one, one by one. It's a very, very painful process, but without this, you cannot get through. So I made a list, and over about uh, over two years, I think I changed about seventy to eighty percent let go. So this is a really big turnaround I had to make. You know, is that the company, uh, 70 to 80 percent of the people are toxic. And when you have one bad apple, you know, next to it, it will influence. That person also influence another one. So uh, this is something really cool. <coughs> really, really, uh, you have to have hard, you know, mindset you know, to do this. And. So uh, over two years, I, uh, I, I removed people, and then I did hire new people. So, uh, so basically, you start with right people. So if you don't have right people, it will not work. You, you, you put so much effort, I know it doesn't work. I've been through that. Uh, don't waste your time to uh, <coughs> give the best training system or Yes, the people management, all those, been there, done that, doesn't work. You want to have the right people first. So uh, make a list, get rid of it. So it, it is, again, really difficult, but you have to do it, no choice. So remove it and uh, uh, 
to people hiring. And uh, this is I, I, I did. Well, about hiring, this is my philosophy. You have to hire slowly. Okay? When you find people, think, interview, 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 background check, background check, background check, again and again. And even after you hire, uh, I usually check the person's behavior. Maybe, uh, very first one week, very, very intensive. And I make sure I have the right person. And my standard is extremely high. If they don't pass this uh, ethic, uh, you know, standard I want, uh, they cannot stay. So, so think about it. If you have the best of the best, the, the company cannot go wrong. So, and then, and then you have to keep watching for a while. You know, a few months you keep watching and then try to see uh, the person's behavior when nobody's around. Usually integrity is about you will do exactly the same thing when there is somebody or not. Right? So to measure your behavior, think about yourself. When you're alone, what do you do? You know, there is uh, any trash you know, on the floor and people around, maybe you pick it up, but there's nobody there. And if you don't pick it up, then you have very, uh, you know, big ethical problem. Right? That's I'm talking about. That's the integrity. And I ask people that exact, exact thing. I have a very, very high integrity. I want, and I am not looking for that. So you, you look for their behavior, and I I terminate a lot uh, within first way or second way. So I was extremely hard person. Uh, when I have to change around, uh, if, if they have this, uh, their ethic, moral, uh, you know, the, the value problem, uh, they cannot stay in the company. So that's about hiring. And, and then um, the, the met method we used there was, uh, the first one is about from internal to forum. So internal people, they know uh, the company's culture and unless they do not like, they will not bring people in. So think about only good, the, the one uh, put the effort so much will bring their, uh, you know, somebody they know. So which is only good, good one will come in. So if, if someone has a, not satisfied with the job or complain, they'll never ever bring their friend, right? So it's very simple. So. Uh, First, use internal referrals, and then uh, second is your own network. People ask people around you, and and, and you use that. And then after that, you go third party, so which is an online job board. Or uh, I do not recommend uh, the headhunters, so because it, there's a conflict of interest. So uh, I didn't have a good. Uh, result uh, through uh, headhunters, so I don't use them, but uh, we use uh, Indeed, I-N-D-E-D, -E is an online aggregator of all, all the online job boards, so that's one of the good uh, uh, places you want to go and, and get it. Um, and then, when the, the, this hiring process, you have to think about to have right team and the right people, uh, a lot of people make a mistake on uh, focusing on their intellectual level or their competency or the, their knowledge. Actually, that that is one part uh, that most people have so much focus on. But you have to think about there is comprised of two parts. One is character integrity, ethic, moral, that, that is one area. And the other area is this intelligence, the knowledge, ability to do it. So when you look at these two areas, and don't make a mistake, you're focusing on so much there, on their uh, experience and ability, actually you're making a big mistake. You know, when you, 
most of the company, when they terminate people, there's statistically about only 5% people are terminated because of their inability to uh, you know, perform something. That means 95% of the reason are from their character problem. So which is about integrity, ethic, moral, that part. That means when you hire, that's obvious, right? where you, you look for. So think about that much integrity part you have to emphasize so much. And, and that's how I, I, I try to filter people. Basically, uh, Warren Buffett, he, he said exactly the same thing. It is about integrity. And he's looking for integrity and second intelligence. And the third one is their, their high energy. So one, two, three. And then if number one, which is integrity, if it doesn't matter, number two or three, it doesn't matter. Don't it. So, um, so I use an interview method of uh, uh, the first initial screening. I use a lot of, I ask a lot of ethical questions. That's pretty much I, I focused on. You know, their ability to do, actually it's in the paper. You read it, you kind of know how much this, this person has a uh, 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 work background, how much he can perform, you kind of know. Actually, the, the part you have no idea is the person integrity, ethic, um, what, what this person's moral is. So you focus on these uh, uh, you know, ethic questions. So, um, so I, I, I ask a lots of hard questions, like you know, confusing them, and uh, you know, they don't know. So, so uh, you know, one example is if their supervisor asks them to do something you know, it's, it's illegal or, or against company policy. Uh, what do you want to do? I ask that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm expecting the person has to be uh, strong and believing in doing the right thing. And it is so important. So uh, that, that's the, the process of uh, you know, hiring I do. And, uh, and actually, I look at this hiring part is only not until you sign the employment agreement. Actually, I, I keep looking at a few more months. I make a lot. Uh, I use a lot of uh, uh, you know, video in, in the office or in the store. And I try to spot the person's behavior when their boss are not around. That's the best time. You know, their boss is not there. What's their behavior? If you look at it, it's very easy to find out uh, if this person has a right mindset or not. So you look at it, you make a decision quick. So when you, there's time comes, okay, this person is not qualified. Then what do you do? You have to terminate, right? Don't drag it. You do immediate. The reason why is, uh, like, like I mentioned about, you know, the toxic people grow, toxic people run. The, the influence is so fast, uh, they learn bad behavior so quick. So that's why when you terminate, you have to terminate immediately. This is one uh, most people make a big mistake. When, when, they, when they terminate people, they have, you know, they, they cannot talk straight. So it's taking time, or what do I do, concern about the person. So that drag, 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 and the longer you drag, actually the person influencing more and more and more people, actually it only makes you harder and harder to run the, run the company. So when it is the time to terminate, you have to do it immediately. I know it is extremely difficult. Sometimes you have to cover that position. I've been there, I ever did that, but it's gonna work. I mean, still, uh, even you put so much, even you close down the store, you better terminate the person. So I'm, because I've been 
I ever done it. That, that's why I, I emphasize it so much. But when you hire, don't ever hire immediately. So it's the opposite. When you hire, you have to background check, ask around, uh, all, you know, we do, uh, all, of course, those uh, in employment uh, verification history, we, we go through all that, and we do all the criminal checks, we do uh, uh, credit score checks, and all those, and anything ethical, you know, when you have a very high uh, you know, credit score, actually there's a higher chance you have the right mindset. How you manage money, and if you look at that, actually, that's kind of your score. So hiring, I think, it's very related. So if you have uh, somebody has a really low uh, credit score, I think that person has a problem. Uh, it's not not all the time, but a very very high chance now that's the problem. So and then that's that's the hiring people hiring part. So now after you hiring, the third one is. Training. Training is something a lot of people think, okay, when, when they have training, uh, they think they teach only how to uh, you know, do their function in, in, in their, that position. Actually, that is a very small part of it. Maybe uh, in our company training, I'll say that's only maybe 20%, at most 30%. So, 70 to 80% of the training, what we do? Actually, we teach about our idea, who we are, what's the culture we have, what do we want to do all together, what's our goal. We have a higher goal. It is not about just making money and we all get rich. We have a higher goal. We have a duty to uh, reach out people and help them. And we have to share those spirit so that the person joining knows exactly what this company is all about so that uh, they become, we all become uh, one. So if the person learn only the job function of you know, how to just run the store, actually all they do is just operate the store and go home, that's it. There is a no connection of the spirit of this company, so which is the culture. So when when they are not in, do not understand our company's spirit, and you will, they will never be one family, because it, it this job is only about making money, and, and just go put their forty hours a week, get the salary, and out. That that's it. But you want way more than that. So uh, you want to uh, emphasize on the training about uh, you know, what your company is, uh, you know, who's who. Uh, so think about just, uh, you know, the softer part of it is that the culture, our spirit, and all that is 70 to 80 percent of what we're doing. It. So, and then once they're in, either they're totally in or they will turn around and they, they, they think in their head it's, it's all BS and then they will laugh. But you know what? Because of that, we know immediately. Within one week, like within one month, you know, we all monitor. We find it. This person is not one of us. Have to go. So, uh, and it, it's, it, it is really rigorous, you know, you know, checking the person if really this person fit to uh, our culture, then accept. Otherwise, you have to let go. So, it, you know, when you have that hiring, very rigorous check, and then our training, that uh, reminding them of you know who we are. Uh, we have every month uh, gathering, uh, company lunch, and there we share a lot, a lot of things. So right that that spot, a lots of uh, culture things happening. So the, the best timing to learn about our company culture, maybe I uh, invite you, anybody, uh, you know, come to when we have a monthly uh, lunch. And you see how we interact, what we share, and what we do, I think you will learn really a lot. It is, it is somewhat like, 
not like a workplace. It's a, it's a more of a, some kind of club, a circle. We get together and uh, we did this thing together. We share what's happening and uh, we share every information actually there. So from financial statement, how much we made a profit, everybody knows. And uh, what, what's our future, whatever good or bad, we share everything. So from there, they, they, they feel it, oh, it's, it's my company, it's my thing. It is not about you sit and then just listen to uh, one person, you know, maybe you know, typically me, just talk and then try to tell them what to do. Actually, on, on that time, I do not talk much. I do, uh, try to let them share. They plan it, they share everything, and I'll talk only very little. If there is something I want to talk, then just at, at the end, very little, and then that's it. So when they interact, especially about when they share uh, which department or which person did such a great job, or we have this incident, but this person did that's great. When, when we encourage them, find, if you spot anybody did a great job, you want to share that. I encourage it. I encourage that all the time. So when, when they talk, usually, typically about five to ten people uh, come up and talk about, oh, this person had a, such a great customer service and, and, and the customer uh, was almost get mad, but because of him, the, uh, the customer really glad and this and that happened, or our office, there is some, uh, uh, let's see, now our lab at one time, actually, there is a, a plumbing problem and, and the flood happened, and one of, one of the members just came on Sunday and found and just cleaned up everything and reported. By the time the report came to me, actually all the case done. There is nothing to do. And then this person just did it. He, he, uh, this person is it, it just hired uh, maybe a couple months and it did that. And, it, and from right that moment, we know that person has belonged to this system, this company. And then when we share that, you know what happened because of that? Most of other people think, oh, that's who we are. I need to do that too. You know, it's, it, it, it is a process of uh, telling. It's an indirect instruction of putting that culture in their mindset. When the time comes to me like that, that is my behavior I have to do. It is way powerful than I tell them what to do. You have to do this and that. Because nobody forced. It just we share, oh, they did this, they did that. So the, the, that, that conversation happening there, it is, it is really amazing. Wow, this is, this is really company, profit organization. It, it's really a surprise, everybody's surprise. Uh, whoever visit that time. So when you build that kind of culture, then it is like you're, you're having big family there. Everybody, whatever, whatever they see, they will just grab and do it. So monthly, they want to make sure, uh, share uh, what's happening, uh, good or bad. Sometimes we have to share a bad story too, so that you know some store. Uh, actually, we have uh, East Coast on one of the store because of storm, really bad weather. We have to shut it down uh, in a few days, and then we lose a lot of money. Uh, we share that too, and you know, so it is nobody's fault, but bad things happen, and when we share, you know what's happening in everybody's mind. Oh, we're going to make that up. Our goal is this. Oh, we, we heard that much. We're going to find, we're going to do better. So it's a big encouragement. Through the bad situation, we make it, everybody has a good encouragement. We can do it. You know, that happens. So either good or bad has to be shared. Everything what's going on. And uh, I want to share uh, things that you know, I practice uh, there based on this brand, uh, you know, identity I want to put and people hiring uh, and training and uh, through 
through uh, lots of uh, things that I do, maybe uh, will be really helpful. But everything starts from heart, uh, you know, caring heart toward the people. So uh, think about this: when you when you hire anybody, you 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 cannot really just respect and honor and uh, love everybody. It's, it's extremely difficult. So, you know, the, you know the, through a hiring uh, process, you got rid of uh, most of the people. So the rest of them, it's a lot easier to love them, right? So, and if you start true love toward those people, once they are in, they're my family. I want to make sure those are they want to stay with me forever. So I want to make sure they get the best uh, from me. So if you start with that mindset, and then it will be a lot easier to give them uh, you know, care and respect, and try to communicate with them individually as much as possible. So, which I use a, a lot of lunch time, try to eat together with them and uh, go out just grab simple lunch and uh, talk about just personal stuff. And it, it sh shows, I want to know about you, and it, it, is there anything I can help you? So think about that. And because I don't have a, such a good memory, I try to, uh, you know, memory, <coughs> you know, their family, uh, in, you know, relationship, and all those, put it in. Try and I have to try to memorize them. And I have my contact list. I put in a memo here. What is my you know, daughter's name, age, or um, uh, maybe son is getting married, or whatever those or all the incident. I try to put a memo here and because it's impossible to memorize every everyone's uh, family and their situation. You know, family matters. So I try to put it in, and then. You know, next time when you meet the person, you gotta memorize everything and then ask them. And so the person know that I care about the person and the family. So think about, let's say, uh, you know, a state governor or president. You know, when you go meet him, can you imagine he remember all my family matters, my wife, my daughter, and my where I live. What happened last year? If it brings up about those story, it can really impact a person. And it is so natural that I remember my boss situation. It doesn't impact much, but when your boss remember about you, it makes totally different. So try to approach individually and uh, 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 put. Care about about their you know, individual situation, and uh, I use uh, the speed of trust uh, textbook, uh, which is it, it. It is kind of the uh, my my business bible that to build a culture. What method I want to use. And so this is from, uh, I'll, I'll share that copy if you really want. Uh, so I'll ask her to uh, email you guys. So I, I just made a summary of uh, the Spirit of Trust book from uh, uh, Stephen Covey's. Uh, it, it is amazing. So basically, about when you have trust with somebody, the, the speed to perform certain work is super fast. And when you don't have a trust, it takes so much time and so much cost. So I always give an example of Navy SEAL, team of, let's say, team of 20 people. And when they uh, decide to occupy some, some uh, certain area, and then when they have a high trust, when they see their eyes each other, they know what's the next step. And then they move really fast, and then attack, job done, I'm out. So 
we are exactly, we try to memorize that and share it. And we share that a lot in our monthly luncheon or many times. Uh, uh, we do also, okay, why don't we uh, share about, uh, we just pick one that uh, we want to share that, let's say talk, there is one of them, talk straight. So let's let's share about talk straight, what is it? We email it out, everyone, and we see it. Anybody think just to respond this way? So everybody uh, uh, will, will read the email and share what's going on. So we try to build a, a common uh, agreed term of the talk straight. So we, well, also we give, talk straight is this, is this. We explain. But what really uh, the definition we build is not just from the book <coughs> and uh, read it. Because that's, that's the, the author's uh, definition of uh, talk string. And we, within ourselves, we're trying to build what is really talk string. And when we share the story about, oh, I have this case, I have this instant, and I share it together, then we kind of know what is talk straight, and that's how we want to do. And so it's like we, we have a meeting about let's uh, build a definition of this. And it, 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 nobody forcing it. it. It just comes up uh, uh, naturally, very easy. So every, uh, you know, there, there are lots uh, so that demonstrate respect, create transparency, uh, right wrongs, uh, show loyalty, listen first, keep commitment, extend trust. There, there are a lot of them really so valuable. If you go through that and share with people, then uh, you're really making such a strong team. And compensation, when it comes to compensation, what I believe is it is not about you pay the top dollar. Um, so let I will share this uh, uh, two uh, two different groups. Maybe you want to break it down a little bit more. Let's see. If you're dealing with minimum wage and uh, maybe about medium salary and then a high uh, high end, you know, maybe over uh, sixty thousand or eighty thousand or higher, and in that area. So different groups. When you deal with a minimum wage, there most of the focus is about eighty percent of your focus it would be compensation. You pay a quarter higher, actually the job can be done really good. So think about what they're looking for and what they want. But when, when it goes a higher salary, actually it is not about the money. The money part is lesser and lesser because they, they get uh, paid pretty well. Actually they want something more than money. So which is other some other form of money, which is benefit, vacation, uh, uh, some other whatever extra uh, you know compensation you can give, you know medical insurance, you know maybe stock option, you know, all those. Uh, but there is a, a more important than that, which is you give them respect. So why I put this respect? In, in this uh, uh, compensation, it is because it is part of compensation, it's a big compensation. Uh, lots of people leave their you know, company because of this, there is no trust, there is no, uh, no respect, that's why they're leaving. A lot of, really a lot. So think about that, why that happened. So when you have a right culture, all those problems removed because you give them respect. You show them you have a higher goal. Our company is not about let's make a profit and everybody get good pay and get paid really good and that's it. There's a big difference in the company when they set their mission statement or value where we have a higher goal. We're not just stopping at, we make a good profit, we share, and go home. It's not that. We want to share our love with others. 
And, and people might laugh about it at the beginning, but when you share, when it's sincere about it, they'll get it eventually. And, and those will separate people who are really in it or not, it will separate them. So, uh, after a while, those who do not agree with that, they usually do not stay in the company long. So it's better for the company. And, and when they have that kind of higher goal, they show the loyalty so much they can perform. Uh, because eventually, after, you know, what, what's the purpose of uh, building such a great culture? I mean, think about it. Why do I make a great culture? And in the end, you know, at least for me, it is about I am going to have the most uh, ideal work environment. So people have fun and they operate everything by themselves. So I can uh, you know, delegate what you know, I, I perform and, uh, and a delegate an empowerment through that they can do everything and then eventually I'll be out of the company I don't have to be there anymore because everybody knows uh, how I do things because I, you know, through the culture they learn everything how I practice you know, anything they learn through that so I don't have to be there to tell what to do. So through that course, they learn everything and, and I'm out. So uh, actually, as uh, end of uh, last year, uh, uh, no longer CEO. Um, uh, basically, I resigned my CEO, that, you know, which is something I've been uh, looking for, that I'm focusing on Christian uh, mission work. So, that, that was my, my goal. So to, to achieve that, uh, I have to be out. So while I'm out, can they per, uh, perform everything? Yes, it, 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 that happens when you build the right culture. And then you show that every day in, in the workplace, it can happen. So isn't it that's all our dream that you don't want to work? Because you know, in this world, you work so hard just for this material, but in the end, uh, you know, this material is just will, will just disappear. And we are looking for this uh, in the heavenly things, and we have to focus on that. So we cannot, you know, put ourselves you know, forty hours a week, or sixty or eighty hours a week in the work, and you cannot do any God's work. You know, that's a shame. So, so you wanna. Uh, try to minimize your time on, on this earthly material thing and try to focus on heavenly you know, work that uh, you have a, you know, such a, it, I, I have a, such a great time that uh, I thought I'll be uh, somewhat you know, concerned about myself. Oh, can I do well you know, after I resign? You know, I, I worked so hard. Uh, about 30 years in my life, I've been working two jobs, three jobs, and constant work, 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 and then suddenly, I don't have work. What's going to happen? And, uh, uh, but, you know, January, February, I was so happy that uh, I didn't have any kind of that in my heart, uh, any, any of that uh, desire of uh, going back to work. Gotta take care of that. I didn't have any of that. I have such a peaceful mind, and I'm so glad. And actually, this morning was I, I shared it with my new CEO. I, I told him, I told him that this is the best, actually second best decision I made in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, first one is I, I I chose my wife and I got married. <laughs> so I quit my job. I think this is the best thing I ever done. Uh, there's such a joy that uh, it, it is, nobody's forcing me you know, what to do, and uh, it, it can be done. 
So when you have this very uh, good fundamental of what's the purpose of we are working so hard to build this business and for to build a good business we're trying to learn this culture how to how to build a culture and all this but our final goal is we want to have a big prize in heaven uh, that that's for everything so when you have a strong foundation of that you know, all this actually uh, it's not that difficult so we have a big advantage over other people because other people out there all their focus is I want to have the highest profit out of, out of this company. When they focus on those high, just profit only, they do not understand the long-term plan of uh, uh, build the right team and compensate them right and respect and love them and care them. And they do not understand. So when we act based on this Bible teaches us, how we have to we have to love other people and how we have to behave that and it shows it all, all in here so which is we have the best mba course in the world you know, we read the bible we show there and the people uh you know in the world uh, they don't have it uh, you know for me personally i don't have any education of uh, business management or any economics or uh, any of that area. You know, I had a math major, and uh, um, that's pretty much it. In the third year of uh, university, I came to U.S. and, and I started from uh, liquor store box boy. So there's no uh, education I got that much. Um, but since I have this Bible, try to practice that in, in, in the work. I share this story in other you know, famous university MBA course. I go there and I share my story. And then a, a, a lot of times they ask, oh, how did you understand that, that servant leadership theory? <laughs> well, I had no idea. <laughs> oh, there's a theory? Oh, so I just tell them. What I, what I did was I, I read uh, Proverbs and tried to do that exactly. So, 2,000 years back, you know, Jesus, he already had it, you know, God already had it in the book, how to manage it. Uh, I practiced that, and then just lately people made the theory out of it. So, they're way behind, and then we're way ahead, which is, we have that much advantage. This is a great textbook, you read it, try to do it. So, so the bottom line is, when you try to share love toward your people, your family, and your company, and you know, all this is a, a lot easier than about running it, uh, make a profit, and you have to, then you look at people just a tool for money making. But if you look at from a you know, biblical point of view, they're my family. I have to, I have to share my love with them. I have to show what Christian Christians practice in, in the work and I want to influence them. Then that is a, I, I didn't know it that will make the business so, so successful. But I just did it according to the Bible and uh, that made us amazing uh, culture in the company. And I think I'm the one of the very rare CEO that received thank you card so much. I have uh, this uh, thank you card piled up crazy. It, think about it. I have all the power. Uh, I'm the founder. I own everything. Uh, there's no other people above me. So I, I can do whatever I want. But, you know, I, I don't use that. Instead, trying to build a counterpart that what I, what I do um, so which is try to find a one or two or more is better somebody has 
integrity and that maybe have um, really long work experience that who has like that dignity and ask the person, can you tell me when I do something wrong, please tell me, please correct me. So when you build that system, think about it. you will be really humble. So uh, actually I did this uh, when I uh, bring this HR person who has a moment about 30, I think roughly about 35 years old, uh, 35 year old, uh, I mean 35 years of experience in, in, in HR. That so he, he has uh, worked in other big, big uh, companies uh, before and he was uh, my consultant for HR. When I start this, this try to uh, reconstruct everything, uh, I try to find HR expert and try to use it as a consultant. So I, I find him and uh, so after I got so much help uh, from him and then he, he helped me finding people, so we hired and, and actually later I decided to bring him in our company. So I was able to bring him in our company and that's the question I asked him. Please, uh, one of the things I asked you, promise me is when I do something unethical, uh, honest, please tell me, you gotta fix me because there's nobody can fix me in the company and I, I believe you has, you're old enough, know everything uh, here and uh, most experience you have and uh, you have uh, most knowledge in, in the company so therefore I ask you and, I have. and, and use your uh, you know, spouse actually your, your husband or your wife is usually the worst critic of you. I think everybody over here, right? Because they, you know, my wife, she knows about me, everything, top to bottom, right? because uh, I'm with her all the time. So she knows when, I, when I'm faking, she knows immediately. Maybe uh, everybody here, I can fake you guys, but if my wife's here, Anything I fake, she knows. And then she will tell me, you did this. You were not yourself. You gotta fix that. And I know it is hard. It is hard to accept. Uh, you know, it's difficult. But it's a blessing. If you have somebody to correct you, and then think about yourself. Uh, actually, I, I build this system in our company called the 360 degree evaluation. So uh, everybody, I, uh, once a year, I give this uh, an evaluation sheet that uh, there are about 12 questions uh, asked, uh, so evaluate me. Uh, uh, is Philip honest? Or do you trust him? Or uh, he's uh, ethic? Or, you know, just put all those and then they'll grade me one through five. One is, let's say, do you trust? <coughs> if it's one, have no trust at all. Five is high to trust. So I get the score. Right? So, and then, of course, ev you know, everyone in the company. And uh, we collect that all together. Of course, they don't put name. And uh, uh, they, they consolidate it into one paper, everything in an Excel sheet, and then I'll get the report. So, and then with that report, I mean, there is also uh, a start, stop, continue. So which is start what they uh, want me start, and then stop is what they want me stop, and something also uh, to continue. So when, when there's something about stop, which is about something I did wrong, and they all put in, and then something they, they want to see and start. So they, they, they write everything. So they, and then after that, consolidate it, put it, make a summary, and then I'll get this. And then there is a, a time, usually, I usually use a monthly luncheon, one of the uh, monthly luncheon. And then um, I 
shield. This is what I got. This is my score. And this year, I got this. And, and uh, you know, some of the score, if I have a three point something, you know, which is somewhat low, then, then I apologize. And I, I said, well, I'll improve, I'll fix myself. And uh, something really high score, then I you know, thank you for trusting me. Great. And there is a, something stuff if they have so much comment, then, then I'll also have to share that. I'm sorry, uh, I did this wrong, but I'll fix it. Or sometimes there is a mis misunderstanding of what I did, and you know, that we have to fix it. So I explained that the behavior I did was because of this and this. So please understand. So, so they're happy to hear. So, it is a full communication, full transparent communication that I'm not anybody's, you know, higher position than anybody that I can just command what to do. It is just a job function of CEO. I just do CEO role of that, that job function. It is not, uh, I am, I have the power to uh, enforce a certain way. I don't do that. So in our director's meeting, same thing. Very democratic way. We, we come together, we, we bring up issues, and then we share, and then we discuss. A lot of times we vote. Okay. So we vote it, and then we decide what to do from there. So we have all, each department directors, all different you know, areas. So a lot of them, they have no idea. Like a real estate department, will not know anything about uh, you know, our product development, which is about you know, developing yogurt flavors. But when there is an issue, they want to uh, share together. And so, uh, <laughs> that means we can. <laughs> Sometimes it, it seems like inefficient. Why real estate department person need to know, you know what flavor is developed and what is going to be? Actually, it is not wasting of time. It is a spirit of we are family. We want to do uh, brainstorm. And if you don't know, you just tell I don't know about it. There's no problem at all. But it is the spirit of uh, with family, we want to share what is going on and make a decision together. So most of the time, uh, we go by the vote, and in a very rare case, I'll, I'll speak up about, oh, that's not the, that, that direction, we'll, we'll be in trouble. And then I bring up and why, I try to explain why, and then change it. But most of the case, I try to let them run it, so which is part of the trust. So, lots of people uh, make a mistake of you know, the definition, I mean, the, the outcome of a trust. Uh, it is of something very dangerous. Actually, not trusting is more dangerous than trusting. Because when so think about it. So when, when you trust somebody and then they, they fail something, and then you have only that much impact, you know, whatever that material. But if you do not have trust, there's a, uh, because of that, you know, you don't trust somebody. Actually, <coughs> you are setting a culture. You're building a culture of not trusting. And then people see it, and then you are paying the price later on way bigger. So a lot of people have that mistake of trusting will damage more than not trusting. Actually, no. Not trusting will make bigger damage than trusting. So you have to uh, uh, practice that. Um, and all, all this uh, building trust is about your your daily behavior. It is not about what you talk, 
It is about how you behave every day. That that's you know. So it's the same thing uh, in, in a in a family. The kids will learn from their parents, not by hearing uh, from uh, their parents what to do. It is about when they see how their parents behave. That's the education of what happened. And, and in the company, same thing. How you do? <coughs> um, do you have that honesty? People know. There's no way to fake. It's just a matter of time. You know, people figure out some, some people very quick. Some people will take a little bit longer. But eventually, they'll get it. This person is honest, or this person is unethical. Or this person behave a certain way, there is no secret. They all know. And so, if we become a real Christian, which is either somebody's around you or not, wherever you go, in your family, in your church, in work, or in any other place, if you're consistent, if you behave exactly the same, same way you behave in the church, think about you know, those, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, not all the churchgoers are believers, and uh, their behavior is up to uh, God's uh, wanting. And uh, think about when you are uh, in the main in the Sunday service, uh, you, you behave a certain way. And you're at least that time you're you're holy and you're trying to praise God and worship, right? That has to be continued twenty four hours. It's not only in the church. So which is which extend in the workplace, <coughs> you're behaving, you're worshiping God right there to the same thing, then People know you, and oh, this guy is this guy is real. He's not thinking. That's how his life is. Then you're building that respect in the company. So that means we have an advantage. Think about it. Other people, they have no idea about this. Non-believers, they have no. They don't know this. But for us, we're supposed to be. If you're a real Christian. We have to be sane here at work, or in, in, uh, in our home, has to be all sane. So when we really try to be real Christian, you know, the, the business has to be really super easy. That's how I believe. And, and uh, it is a shame that uh, lots of Christians uh, cannot uh, make a good business than non-believers. That's a shame. That's uh, something's wrong. Because we have such a great tool, great, the best MBA textbook here, and all the instruction here. If we follow exactly, you know, our, com you know, our company culture can be built super well. So, um, and uh, maybe one last thing I want to share. Lots of organizations, they think uh, the fear, making fear is one way to manage people. Uh, yes, in a certain way, a certain time only. So fear is something you, when you are present, the fear works. But the moment you are not there, the fear So that means you have to be with them all the working time. You have to follow them to keep that fear and then and make it work. There's no way you want to do that. And you want to let them perform. And you want to uh, come to church and do God's work that time, right? So, it is a really very uh, big mistake of uh, you know, running the company traditional way of uh, having trying to have authority 
power and fear. When I make that happen, it can go only so much. And you want to have people perform while you are not there. That's the biggest challenge. That's why we were learning this, this culture. What this culture is all about, you build a certain way, people will follow that. That's the way people do, and you set it. And when you are not there, because culture is there, culture will tell everyone how to do it, and it runs by itself. You know, that's, that's the most uh, the ideal way of running business, right? You don't, you don't want to be in that business, and, but business running by itself. You know, that's the best way to do it. So, um, I believe that's uh, most uh, I shared. And uh, there are, uh, I have this you know, speed of uh, trust the presentation, and this is, uh, maybe can I go through very quick that Next page. Yeah, trust is uh, uh, that basically everyone looking for that trust. We all want it, and uh, we want to be able to trust, and I want to be able to be trusted also. Uh, and then uh, next page. You know, in our. Uh, Company Overland. Uh, when when you try to uh, perform certain uh, thing, um, <coughs> usually you make a plan and then you exercise it, right? And and this most people talk. I uh, mean the uh, best performing CEOs they all talk about this. It's all about execution. You have a terrible plan, but if you have a good execution, it will work. Okay, welcome in one more time. Thank you. The question is, uh, uh, you know, other than just monthly lunch, uh, once a month, uh, if you have any uh, manager training, and uh, uh, what was if you have any other uh, training, any other kind of training, uh, yes, we do. We have, uh, we try to have a several different kind of. So, let's say, um, so we have uh, a senior level. Let's say senior manager, VP level, and then director, manager, and. Uh, so, uh, how we try to do it, I try to share. So it's, it's kind of very simple, very small group kind of training that uh, I, just, I try to share my philosophy. So sometimes about money, I talk about money. This is what I believe, how we handle. Uh, so something very, very you know, basic 
things that, but people do not practice it in a way. So let's say things like um, your your income versus uh, expense. You, know, how you can watch the amount of your spend and uh, you do not overspend and how you build uh, your credit. And, um, this is basically how to manage uh, the money right way in God's point of view. Uh, I try to share that. And uh, so it's a very simple, small, you know, training session. Uh, I do that. Uh, with different subjects. Also, uh, each department also we try to have uh, various uh, type of uh, uh, you know, subject and have a training. So sometimes very technical. Let's say Excel spreadsheet, we have that training. Uh, sometimes we have uh, uh, learning about uh, uh, their some stock related, our stock option and uh, related items to share, and sometimes uh, uh, medical and insurance related. Um, so it's kind of informative uh, training, uh, and sometimes it's really hardcore uh, that uh, you really learn it. It's not just listening and practice. So there are various uh, ways of doing it, but one of the thing I uh, I try to do is if there's something that I really want that everyone have it, then I, I use in a way. Okay, I teach with this. This is what I want to implement. I want to do it. And then as directors, I mean, with this, will teach their department and directors. And then I try to be there. I want to see their teaching right there. Because uh, always the biggest challenge of uh, any big organization is every layer you go down, you're going to lose more than 50%. That's a big challenge. So when it comes down, if, if you go four times down, so 50%, 25%, 2.5%, 6%, so only 6% of my message is done. <laughs> right? Think about that, that's scary. So that's why I want to be there when I will be being trained. So I have a 100% fully uh, go down. And then VP teach the director, and when director teach the manager, VP will be there when director teach manager. So you, if you use that way, so we put extra time, but when it goes to uh, the bottom, uh, we don't lose that much. So when there's very important method, I try to use that. Um, yeah, we, uh, maybe one of the unique things in our company about training is we talk about a lot about the integrity, ethic, honesty, our higher goal things a lot more. Uh, uh, the, the material part of those uh, you know, financial part actually relatively very small because when we talk about the financial, uh, we tend to lose our uh, heart and you know, just go for the, the number and, and we make a lot of mistakes. And sometimes we lose why we are existing. Sometimes we lose that and try to make because we want to make more profit, because of that, um, we might sacrifice quality of product, which I talked about who we are. You know, we started on our mission statement, that we're violating mission statement to have a better performance. That's, a, that's something very wrong, right? So we have, what's the highest goal? First one was our mission statement. That has to be stick to the principle and then value. Are we doing according to this value? Totally honest, totally kind. Are we doing according to that? And so, so we share that a lot. So maybe that's a little bit different than any other company. Could you repeat the uh, five value and uh, you had uh, like the five strategies? Yeah. Um, we have uh, you know, totally honest, totally kind. Uh, maybe I will 
I have this, uh, this PowerPoint and uh, uh, you know, <coughs> this, uh, I have a couple of five speed of trust and then 13 behaviors of uh, you know, great leaders, you know, the most, I think, uh, it is important. And then this uh, five, I mean, all, all this also I will share. I have this uh, memos I will share. Anyway, I will explain again. First one is THTK, totally honest, totally kind, and uh, humble. And these two are most important core. And after the other three are same as others, you know, passionate, innovative, and teamwork. So maybe if I explain a little bit about THTK, this is a really important part where uh, totally honest means, yes, we are going to talk about my part and the other part and the other person's part honestly. Sometimes it becomes an, an attack of the person because the other person's, whatever they have done wrong, we are going to talk everything transparent, right? So then what is happening, people tend to use this as an excuse to attack people. So since we have TK, which is totally kind, we have to do with that, which is our final goal of this discussion, to make the other person better. So to do that, you have to do it with kind mindset. So when you, when you trying to teach your children, and uh, try, when you spank them, if you do not have a loving heart, they know it. It's just punishment. They hate, you know, so you hate them and they just hit it. But there is a huge difference if you do with love. They know it. Even they, they get hit, they cry, but they still love their parents. Actually, it's the same concept when you do totally honest. So sometimes it's just too much open to talk everything. So become uncomfortable, but if you do a um, kind heart, then it makes totally different. So that's why the, the first of the, the first one, THTK, is so important in our family. And um, our strategy is basically, I can summarize with two things. <coughs> I think all food industry, I recommend maybe use this. Because restaurant is all about food taste. If you don't have a you know, good taste, forget it. <laughs> you better not do it. Because, you know, again, people can forgive price, but they will never ever forgive the taste. If the taste is lousy, forget it. Even they pay dirt cheap, they still complain. So, uh, product quality first, that's why I put best quality yogurt is first. And then the second is best flavor and product innovation. So which means we try to bring variety of flavor, new flavors all the time. And so every flavor, number of flavor we bring in is one flavor a month. All the time, new one coming up. So we have five people, five uh, uh, product R&D people just creating yoga, just working on your five people. So it's a small organization, five people just working for your flavor. That's, uh, that's, that's strange, but that's how much I emphasize. And then the uh, next one is best value. So, and here you shouldn't uh, be confused about the value. It's not just about price. It's about, uh, don't confuse that. I'm going to sell only chip. Value is about whatever the product you give. Product includes not just only that, that yogurt, it is about our uh, store ambience, our service, our cleanliness, and all together. This all together are product we are giving to our customer. And for that, how much you are getting paid, the comparison is value. So let's say, if I have a steakhouse and, uh, and, and I, I, I get the best 
steak ever, let's say Kobe beef, and uh, I have a steak, and then I charge maybe $100 per dish for amazing environment, amazing service, everything, maybe it's a great value. But if you have a, a place you go, uh, they still, they, they also serve steak, but it's terrible steak, and maybe dog won't even eat. And then you're charging them maybe $10, maybe there is no value. I mean, they are, it, it is too expensive, right? So, see, it's a really relative. What you give uh, uh, to the amount of you charge. So that's the value you want to create. So uh, don't confuse about you're trying to charge only cheap, cheap, cheap. No, it's not going to work. You have to think about for the service part of all together what you give to your customer and how much you charge. You have to compare and it has to be very competitive. So that's the value I'm talking about. So you, that's why I didn't put it here. That's the price for customer. It is not the price. I mean, yes, we have a pretty good price system, but uh, other people try to copy us. They try to put the same price and they cannot make the profit. Because we have a sales volume and two or three times more. So we had all the calculation and built in and then we make just the right amount of profit. I mean, if you become greedy and try to make more profit, actually people see there's no value anymore and will not come. So you have to you have to hit the, the, the sweet spot of where is the, the pricing for your uh, product, service, you know, everything all together, where you should stand at. So you have to analyze and keep right. I just wanted to congratulate you for uh, taking that big step of uh, moving towards missions and letting your uh, CEO position to a new next leader. Um, could you share with us a little bit about how you were involved with missions while you were a CEO, but now that you are um, uh, more uh, free to uh, choose uh, how you're involved, how, how that may have okay. changed a little bit? Uh, All right. Yeah, maybe this one might take longer, but I'll try to <laughs> <just> squeeze it. <laughs> So to be honest, it is not about I, I dropped a uh, CEO position to do Christian mission. Uh, to be honest, it is about when I become a CEO and uh, making good money and especially about attention I get uh, through, from media. Other people, and that caused me to uh, What I meant it was, I tried to be uh, right in front of God. That everyday life, what I do, I want to be, uh, I want to practice like a real Christian. So, which is one of the things that I really have to be careful is about I get all the attention, which is a fame. You know, fame is more, I mean, uh, bigger attraction than money, actually. When, when you go, when you have an experience of making money, when you go making more and more money, and after that, you think about fame. You, your authority, and your power, you love that. There is no exception. I thought I don't have it. I don't have that desire. And I learned in extension I do have it. So that's the part I was scared that, wait a minute, I'm getting that attention. This is a big no-no. Because think about that Satan, that what happened to him? He's supposed to, he tried to get that glory and he would fall into the net. And basically, it's a similar thing. You, you, you're trying, you, uh, especially, you, you're trying not to, like, you're there. You, uh, you're just sitting there, but people bothering you that, 
and they glorify you. And uh, that, that makes me very nervous and scary. Wait a minute. I'm getting their attention, especially when those media, you know, newspaper, uh, you know, TV, and goes out, they talk about, and all the restaurant industry, franchise uh, industry, they ask me to, you know, to speak about how you build a company, a reputable company, how fast, you know. We have so much, so many, like a record breaking stuff uh, in, in this industry. So they want to hear my story. So they ask me, come speak, and they, they want to. Uh, so there is that respect I get so much. And then, and then after a while, I become, I, I enjoy it, wait a minute. And then, oh, I shouldn't do this. So actually, at that time, I decide, you know, this is not right. I should, I really have to be careful. And then I plan, like, I have to drop this. Because the, the biggest mistake is I did all this, and after that, I get all the glory. Wait a minute. That was a main motivation of why I dropped it. I, I shouldn't do this. So let, let's drop this word. And then what do I do after that? So of course, uh, I want to be, I be uh, in a part of that Christian mission work team somewhere. And I want to uh, devote my time there for uh, his kingdom. So I'll say, but. When, when I uh, announced my resignation in, in our uh, system, so it, it, our, all the franchises, uh, first, first of all, I had to talk to <coughs> our people in the office. So talk about, because they knew I had been involved in their missionary work and all that. So it was very natural that <coughs> I am moving to that because I told them someday I'll be involved there. And they all knew it, so it's not something surprising. But they didn't know the time came so quick, so I was surprised. And then after that, I, I um, <coughs> announced to all franchises, so I sent the email that uh, I'm resigning uh, to focus on Christian mission work. Because people will not understand why I'm quitting, because I'm getting all the attention, I, I'm, I'm becoming big, and I have to drop. People will not understand. So. I don't have to explain all the details. It's just simply, okay, I'm doing Christian work, therefore I'm not going, uh, I will stop this day-to-day uh, you know, -day operation as a CEO. So that's what I did. And then after that, what happened was other media, like Orange County Business Journal, OC Register, LA Times, and here, there, they want to talk to me. And, but I really didn't want to talk to them. So that's why I didn't do any interview, no interview at all. But they just wrote from that uh, the letter I sent it to franchisees. They just used that and then they wrote their own article and in LA Times too. So that's why all these uh, people see me as uh, I, I, I resigned because of uh, Christian mission work. But, uh, so I'm being honest here. Actually, that's my second reason and, <laughs> I mean it just happened to be like that <laughs> the first one real real uh, you know, reason it was I was scared you know I, I shouldn't be like this and uh, I had to go back you know, before oh my god take away everything I have and I better uh, I better uh, I just give up humble in front of him so that I'll have a long life. <laughs> yeah. that, that's a transition what happened uh, really and then uh, since I I have my uh, personal network of uh, missionaries before I'm not involved in any one certain organization and work work for that it's not that I, I go to uh, New Song Church in Irvine and uh, actually the pastor there, he doesn't even know me there, actually. Uh, so I, I don't interact uh, deeply there. I just attend the service. Uh, uh, nobody knows me there. So I'm more comfortable like that. Um, so 
it is, it is uh, you know, there is no connection with any like church or any organization. It is, uh, it is through my personal network. I have missionaries that I use to help them uh, spiritually. And a few years back, I started to visit there you know, one by one. And from there, I, I, I learned, oh, I think this is the thing that I should do when I retire. I have that in mind. So when I <coughs> hit the CEO role, then you know, obviously yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So uh, I keep continuing meeting them and visiting them, increase them. So that's called, I didn't know the term, exact term, just, okay, that's something I want to do. And I didn't know there was already the definition term, you know, soon when Son Gyoza. <laughs> oh, there is such a thing. Okay, <laughs> that, that, that was what I was, you know, I was doing. So, um, so that's one of the area uh, I'm involved, in. and then uh, there are some uh, other organization that where I uh, have very close contact, and uh, they have done such a great job for uh, missionary support and all that, and they they need some good help as a Savvy uh, business, business manager, uh, they want to bring so uh, maybe I can help them because God uh, trained me all this time in that strategic planning, how to execute, how to build people, uh, culture, and all that, how to uh, accomplish certain things. So maybe I'm uh, trying to involve them, which is in, in Korea. So a uh, lot of my time will be uh, in, in Korea. There is no uh, certain you know, clear direction of uh, uh, this is what I am going to do. Only there's no. I just have a few things. I try to put together what is, what is my role. So whatever God leads me, uh, I have to follow. And one of the things I know is uh, there is no agenda for me. Uh, people ask me, so what's your goal? What is your I kind of know what I can do, but I have to wait for, I have to listen to God, like, where He want to lead me, and that's where I feel you know, I have to do. So, it is, it is not at all about, not like a sea or law anywhere, no. Um, you know, um, I have to be humble, whatever, if something very, very simple, uh, if God sent me certain country, something I did, you know, I had to struggle with people there, and then if that is the direction he put me in, then I'll go. Actually, one time I almost went to Argentina, some very, very small, small town, and so I thought, that's the direction, so I dropped pretty much, tried to clean it up, and plan everything, but, God, you, you really want